all singing little wallah, pop a ball up a yacht, chain swinging, clang clang, and it costs a lot. Bitch, I'm always at the guala, yeah, and you are not mad as me. Keep on going till you hit the spot. Oh, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bed, never drop a low. Mama called me and she happy with the grow. Never ever yeah. fall for a honey, that's a no. Just pop the kidney about a million options. Said it's talking to stop doing the green and I rock the green and bring in the piece. I'm loving that pot in the car, pretending I got all the eyes on me. Got a bad baby and she's independent. Too many people loaded up me to seek an attention. When they want me about the goofies, man, I should've listened. And it's hell of the money, my strangest addiction. Uh, she took for dick, I let her let, I had to dip. I'm on for fifth, I'm all rich now. I bought a whip, I paint a paint, it drives itself. The fuck you think, yeah, I'm rich now. Hey, little mama, yeah, you heard about me. I'ma pop you like a pea, yeah, at a mommy. Yeah, feel so hard, like I'm chilling on the beach. Yeah, baby, in the sun, like the Teletubbies. Oh, sing a little wallah, pop a ball up a yacht, chain swinging, clang clang, and it costs a lot. Bitch, I'm always at the guala, yeah, and you are not mad as me. Keep on going till you hit the spot. Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bed, never drop a low. Mama called me and she happy with the grow. Never ever fall for a party, that's a no. I've been in the club and taking shots, if you got your mask. Off in the fuck you getting crap, popping out the front. Shut the CBS is like a black away, but I'm on my ice cold is dry on my face. Y'all need that PVS, my ice is fake, your life is fake. I just to do what for my pocket sake You're basing your opinion So what the major says I renovate the bad energy I can face <laughs> Yeah, I don't really ever want to talk, 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 talk Only really ever want to talk, 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 talk Guess I'm going back to the side, 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 side At least this money never reached I think that's the actual song itself Hey, little mama, yeah, you heard about me I'ma pop you like a pea, yeah, at a mommy Yeah, I feel so hot like I'm chilling on the beach Yeah, baby, in the sun like the Teletubbies Oh, sing a little while I pop a ball up a yacht Chain swinging, clang, clang, and it costs a lot Bitch, I'm always at the Guala, yeah, and you are not mad as me Keep on going till you hit the spot Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow She got a big bed, never drop a low Mama called me and she happy with the grow Never ever fall for a party that's a no on the music so you can hear that that's going to be the volume when I'm actually talking right so cool all right well uh the only person in right now is my child so I may not begin anything unless I see somebody in here Turn it back up.
Chain swinging, clang clang, and it costs a lot. Bitch, I'm always at the gorilla, yeah, and you are not bad as beat. Keep on going till you hit the spot. Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bear, dump her, drop a low. Mama called me, and she happy with the grow. Never ever yeah. fall for a body that's a no. Just bought the candy and bought a million options. Said it's talking to stop doing the green, and I rock the green. It's bringing the peace. I'm bumping that pot in the car, pretending I got all the eyes on me. Got a bad baby, and she's independent. Too many people loaded at me to seeking attention. When they want me back. The goofies, man, I should've listened And it's smell of the money, my strangest addiction uh, If she tip for dick, I let her lit I had to dip, I'm on for fifth, I'm a rich now I bought a whip, I paint a paint It drive itself, the fuck you think? Yeah, I'm rich now Hey, little mama, yeah, you heard about me I'ma pop you like a pea, yeah, and a mommy Yeah, I feel so hot, like I'm chilling on the beach Yeah, baby in the sun, like the Teletubbies Whoa. Singing low, while I pop a ball off of y'all Chain swinging, clang, clang, and it costs a lot Bitch, I'm always at the gorilla, yeah, and you are not bad as beat Keep on going till you hit the spot. Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the bow. She got a big bear, dump her, drop a low. Mama called me and she happy with the growth. 
Never ever fall for a party love for nothing. in the club and taking shots if you got your man. Scoffing the party, you getting crap. Hopping out the front. Shit, the CVS is like a black away. Bottom moisturizer, my ice cold is dry on my face. Don't need that PVS, my ice is fake. Your life is fake. I just to do it for my pocket sake. You're basing your opinion, so what the major says. I renovate the bad energy I erase. Uh. Yeah, I don't really ever wanna talk, 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 talk. Only really ever wanna talk, 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 talk. Guess I'm going back to the side, 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 side. At least this money never really stops, stop, stop, stop. Hey, little mama, yeah, you heard about me. I'm a puppy like a kitty, yeah, had a mommy. Yeah, I feel so hard like I'm playing on the beach. Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> well, let's try and get this started. Uh, Lenny. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being my one fan. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. So, the first thing I did, um, just kind of want to talk about a couple things here. Uh, let's see. Um, I am going to uh, kind of, basically, I've, I've got my camera built right now. It's already set up how it's, you know, it's already set up with the uh, shark fin on it. It's got the batteries on it right now. Um, it can power up. Uh, I had to take off everything else, so otherwise no baby will be able to see what was going on. Um, so there's that. Now let me see here if I can do this one thing. I uh, don't like that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Thank God. Okay. Um, yeah. So, anyway. Uh, got the build here. And, um, yeah. I'll show you how to power. I'll show you how the power is on, just so you know. And I thought I would just do it in reverse to kind of back out. So it's powering up. Good. That's always good. Um, okay. So I'll do this. Gonna get this to tighten in. Yeah, I can't really get any tighter than that. Anyway, uh, so right now we got both. We have both of our batteries on right now. You can't see up here. Maybe you can't all get it up here as close as I can. All right, see, it's at 16 volts there at the top, top right-hand corner of the screen. That's where we're at. So if I take the battery off, which I do here, get one battery off, we're still at 16 volts. Put this battery on. When I do it, the 16 volts doesn't change, by the way. It's 16 point whatever. So here goes the other battery. These are always hard to, you know, little nano kind of things. They're always a little, it was 16. There you go. No problem. We got one battery on. Um, so that's the gist. I'm going to turn it off and then I'll walk you through and how this thing works. All right, so I'm going to pull the battery off. All right, we'll set that aside for the moment. Um, but this is kind of the, this is kind of the gist here. One of the things I've got uh, is a, le there's a Limo cable. This is how the whole thing is powered up. Um, and it is a 90 degree Limo cable, and I will show you this uh, very quickly here. I have Alvin's, Alvin's cable is, is actually uh, making a modification right now. I was talking to them last night at about 4 a.m. as a matter of fact. Um, but there's this cable that I have. It's just, it's as simple as a splitter, really. It's just, I, I don't know why. There, I don't know if there's a technical reason why nobody's done it or some electrical reason where, you know, Ken soon or somebody's just going to go, oh my God, don't do that. It's going to destroy your camera. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a problem as I've been testing it. I've been running um, little voltage things on it and stuff, and it looks like it's fine. But the trick here, it's not just that this is the 90 degree 
thing here. What it is, is that Alvin, these guys make, I'll right, we'll do this real quick. These guys make something very cool. Uh, and I've added them on to several different types of cables. Um, but it's a rotating 90 degree cable. And um, they did not provide this wrench. This is a wrench that I uh, fortunately hung on to. It's one of those, you know, it's basically one of those crappy ones that you get with like Ikea or some stupid little um, product that you buy where they, they toss in some garbage. <laughs> they put in some garbage wrench or something like that. But the reason why that's good, and you can probably find one, you might be able to cut something like this or whatever, is that this spot here where the where that you can adjust is only about as wide as this right here. So you put this in here and you can undo the cable tightening part. I may be getting a little ahead of myself here on some of this stuff, but anyway, what this allows you to do, I didn't get it loose enough in one second here. So now if you see right here, you see the red? Normally that's stuck in one spot, right? And so you're just completely screwed on your um, ergonomics of where you want your cable to go. So they've got it like that. And you know, so once you get it where you need it, and in our case, we want it to go here, that direction. We will tighten it back up. A lot of times I don't really tighten it until I really get it where I need it, but it can kind of wiggle loose a little bit. But anyway, so it's just a splitter. It goes, you know, and if you're using these knits, um, if you're using these knits V-mount things here, they have a DC, they have a DC port on both sides actually. They have a DC port here and a DC port here and a D-tap down here and a D-tap down here. The difference between the DCs and the D-taps is just, it's just a lot smaller, uh, easier to work with kind of thing. Um, and typically when you're using the, when you're do, when you're inserting the DC uh, pistons, whatever you want to call these, in the holes, there there is a tendency that they come out like a little too easy in my opinion, which is why it's, you know, a lot of people would prefer the D-tap. But that is one thing that I've kind of tried to, I guess that has kind of worked out to our advantage here in terms of the way that this is built because I have to get it so far against the body of this uh, thing that I've made here with these screws back in here and the L-bracket and all that sort of stuff that the cable can, it can only come so far out and it'll still be connected technically. But this really locks it in. Of course, I've got these you know, funneling through here and stuff to kind of keep it really locked down and all that sort of stuff. So what we'll do here is we will basically take this entire thing apart and then I'll reassemble it using um, maybe a new, uh, new one that I've got. I, I, I put together a black one. So that might, I thought that might be kind of fun. All right, so let's let's begin. Also, this is just part of the back. Can't bring it back in. Yeah. The skeleton of this thing is this is a fin right here. Is this one fin thing that goes in between these two bills? Normally, that is called the shark fin, and that's all it is. Uh, but the reason why I call this whole thing. I'm calling this thing the Remora system is because of all the things that attach to it, including the cables, whether it's the cables or the pieces that you can attach to it, uh, all of the cheese plates, just everything. Um, and it's, you know, aftermarket type stuff. I mean, you're basically taking two knits, B-mount plates, and you're sandwiching them together to try and um, 
try and do this whole thing. So, anyway, so let's, uh, get that here. Okay. So, as I said, let's start trying to disassemble this thing. And then once I get it disassembled, we'll start talking a little bit more through, uh, parts and what all's, what all's involved in this, what I'm involved in this thing and stuff. Okay, so... Most, most everything here is going to be using um, M3 hex nuts and M4, M5 hex nuts. So let's start with the M3 here. I've kind of tinkered with this a couple of days to try and figure out good angles and stuff. And there's just not really great angles. Although I got one here. Where's this one? Hey, what do you know? <laughs> so I got an ATM uh, mini switch the other day, the Black Magic one. Works pretty cool. Here's your angles and stuff. Okay. So that's piece number one. Let's call that the rear hatch. And I'm going to show you this here. There's less light here. Okay. Let's go back to top. All right. So these two screws right here are M4s. And they go into screw holes that are already part of these two V-mount plates. And so, again, what I try and do a lot is repurpose and utilize what's already there. I'll unscrew these. The M4s. I was hoping to have some more microphones to kind of do a little just some more silliness. Um, we've got the M3. I will post something up here that will have it'll show the parts and all that good stuff. You want to do? It's not like it matters unless you buy one or have one of these, but it's still good to see. Okay, so that's kind of what happened here. One thing I'll point out that I did. There's two methods of doing this thing. I created two different versions basically as I was going along. Uh, our NITS folks won't be happy about <laughs> some of the drilling I've done and stuff, but I made, um, originally I made uh, this so that this top piece here would only screw into the fin here and here. Um, so it was two points of contact and it's not a big deal because once this sits down and um, let me do this real quick here, sorry guys. Once this is resting on here, it doesn't really have anywhere else to go anyway. So it's not like it's a big deal. Um, but I wanted to, I was looking for more places of contact and just overall strengthening of the whole thing. So I drilled two holes in the top here and put threads in them and all of that. And then that's when I just created a different uh, way to lock this thing down. So it also helps hold the 
pieces together. Just overall rigidity is better that way. And I created some inserts that go inside these boxes uh, that I will show you uh, once I take those apart a little bit. Uh, you'll see how that how that works. Um, but you're starting to see see this thing a little more naked now as we go through this. I will flip this over. You see these? So you see these two things here. Those are some custom. Um, I don't know if you know what a T-nut is, but they're custom nuts um, because there was no real way to screw the two plates together themselves uh, without creating something, you know, a real janky nut. And I had some at first when I was doing my initial prototypes and eventually I just modeled my own 3D printed nut that I could stuff down to that whole thing. And believe it or not, even though it's 3D printed, the threads are pretty, pretty, pretty ridiculous. It holds together really well. And I think I'll show you why I think here in a second that it does as opposed to, you know, maybe something else here. Let's see, what do I got here? I don't know if that's in a better angle or not. I mean, they're so, they're in there so well. <laughs> That's the one thing is like, you know it's fine if it takes so much effort to get the thing screwed in there, so. Same thing with the string. So I bought my own additional uh, screws here instead of the, God, sorry, this loud, wow, guys. actually pushing it out this way. I need you to go that way, buddy. Okay. All right, here we go. We're getting this. So the screws that went through here initially, the ones that come with it, those are M5s. And so I just bought my own M5s. And I wanted them black because I like to match and stuff. Okay, but as you pull this off, let's make sure to talk to you here real quick. As you pull these off, you've got your cable there, so you just undo it, and that's where it's going in right there. Same here, it's already attached to this deep C cable there. Now I've got my two, got my two boxes. So this is one of those things where you tell, I'm kind of like, hey, Nick's guys, you realize if you make this, you get to sell two of these every time you do it. So, sell well. Anyway, one thing I want to point out here that I do have to do is that because the knit plates, and I love them by the way, so no problems here, but because they have power on both sides and it's, you know, fantastic from that perspective uh because their ejection buttons come out on the sides instead of the top at a certain point trying to get you know trying to get it close to the camera body this starts the length of this starts to become a problem um depending on how close you want it i think if you were making it out of metal and nobody cares about how far away it is from the camera it's not a big deal you just make a longer shark fin problem solved uh i my goal is to try and get this as close to the body as humanly possible so theoretically even if i were to if there was a way to do this without having to have these uh, these extra supports up here 
I would be able to get it even closer. You know, my goal would be, sorry, my goal would be able to get it to where the battery is like almost touching this here. So that would take probably this much off the shark fin right here. You'd, you'd lose a significant amount off the shark fin instead of being, instead of being back here, it'd be almost here for most for most nano size batteries and again that's that's the goal of this whole thing anyways because the nano nature of it there's lots of big shark fins there's not any that i've noticed that do all this extra stuff that where you can attach things and stuff like that but there are shark fins for larger products and there are shark fins that uh have the d-tap in the back uh that are adjustable for length is really great. Okay, side note here real quick. Pause this for a second. So these, these are the special nuts that I created. Right? See how they're, they're different sizes on both sides. Here's the side and you kind of got like that, right? Well, the reason why that is, is because the back of here is, is smaller, like this side top has this inset here with a lip on it which is what that's for there and it allows this to go fit right down in here and lock it in there hopefully it'll do it there's probably one on the other side or something like that it's not a big deal they fit they fit really tight which is kind of the purpose uh, So anyway, it pulls it in, it pulls it in there and makes it tight, and it just keeps it from being able to turn. Um, you can't get normal nuts. That's the thing. So you ha it had to be done to make one of these things because normal nuts are just too big. Uh, okay, so want to walk through something else here. You notice that each one of these has a different length on it. Um, this is the one that faces out the back. This is the one that faces towards the camera. And how I did it, um, basically, I to figure out what I needed to do, I took the long one and I pushed it in. Basically, I pushed it in and then I marked right there to know that that was the maximum that I could cut off. And then I did that to here. You can see it goes in, goes out. It's a little, uh, it's not great. I'd rather it not be like that. Um, Cause sometimes you do have to kind of get your finger down in there just like so and do it. But hey, for me to have hot swappable power and some other things that I will show you, I am fine with that. Okay, so we'll set the, you know, what do we do real quick here? Oh, let's go through this for a second. I want to show you how this top attaches. It's another one. Nits, Jaden, close your eyes. I'm not telling anybody to do this. You open your thing. Any kind of warranties or whatever, that's your call. Not mine. I'm the guy that uh, tends to take a little bit more risks and I ruin a lot of things. Um, which is another reason why I don't just give this give these products away because I buy a lot of things and I ruin a lot of things trying to figure out how to do it. Um, I did try and make these for different nano mounts and i will show you a couple that i tried here in a second but okay so you see this green thing here this is a special custom thing that i made it's a insert and i needed it to fall right in place in this slot that they already had built they already had the slot built in to their 
uh, plate, and that's all that was left. <laughs> that's all the space I had. So I wanted to make something that would fit right in there. Now, the important part here is this little doodad right here. I made this little spot, and I have a lock nut. And I have a lock nut down in here right now. Not a regular nut, it's a lock nut. So it's going to be a little tighter. But there's things you have to accommodate when you're making stuff fit in here. I had to make these two little notches here, right here. And those two notches, reason why those are there, are just to kind of help. Um, you see at the top of the circuit board here, there's just a couple of touch points right here. And I didn't want there to be any pressure on those spots. So I just created these little notches to make sure that I was avoiding that. Um, so then, now you can see again, you can see this hole. A very bad hole, by the way. But it's a hole. And um, I uh, use threads and stuff like that. But the idea here is that you get this screw, or this nut, you, want, you get it placed right underneath. And so what's happening here, because of this, and you see I've got it in that shape right there, and it's under here, it's got a way to, it's gonna be pulling that nut against here, against under here, and tightening everything to it. I couldn't just stick a nut inside here, or it would turn while I was trying to tighten. So that's the whole reason this insert here is, is, insert really is here in the first place. It's just to create something so that the nut won't turn. And there's one in the other box as well. I'll reassemble that. Do this real quick. Hopefully. I mean, everything pretty much that I do is based on just trying to make other people's products work with what I'm I'm doing. It's all they're all basically hacks of a, of a sort. Um, I, I find that just so often that people just don't make products that we need. They make they make a product like 50% as good as it could be, almost there, and for us Z cameras out there, we're still so low on the food chain. We don't have anybody like, you know, like Red, where people are making stuff for us all the time, you know? So yeah, you can find some things kind of close for, for Red or something like that, but you can't find Squat for Z cam. And I, I really like these cameras a lot. And so I try and push to make them work and push and push and push. I find myself uh, doing so much to try and push these farther than they than they should be actually. But uh, anyway, by the way, got a PL mount on here right now. I had to take everything off so you could see it. I had my, uh, my new um, Greyjoy Anamorphics uh, on here and everything. Um, this is a very cool little cap that's metal that I got. Um, I think I got that from either either Adorama or B&H, but uh, super cool. Okay. Um, let me see. What's the best way to get this thing? Start start taking this disassembling this thing. Okay. I can put the M2 back because the only reason why I use the M2 was to take the back off of these things. So we got back to our M3s. Gonna take this part off. This is the bottom cheese plate. There's not much that you would do on a bottom cheese plate, by the way. You know, I got an idea. How about I take, just to make it easier for you all to see what's going on here. I'll take off my quick, quick, quick 
these. I use these long ones, by the way, the really long ones, because when I'm trying to balance things and uh, you get a you know, massive lens on there or something, it just helps. Let's see. And if you just don't quite have it just right when you've got an injured tripod, then you've got just plenty of room to slide forward. I'm almost even used it for like a kind of created a faux slider move uh, before of just by having a longer um, just by having a longer quick release plate. Okay. Anyway, so start pulling some of these out here. That is not in focus. Come on. Blame the GH5. Come on, GH5. Yeah. I haven't got the new GH6 because I am dedicated to C Cam. So. So there's your bottom cheese plate. And we'll go through some stuff on that that uh, kind of makes that L. Got these two pieces that go into this camera, what I call camera attach. And then this little screw right here goes into the actual fin itself. Um, we'll point out later. Lots of different sizes here too. Interesting thing here is there's a nut right inside this little crack here. Um, and that helps hold in the, uh, when you put this hinge in here, it gives it a point to screw in so that the screw doesn't come in and out or anything like that. So, okay, where are we at? We're near here. Okay. This is kind of what things are looking like right now. I'm going to pull off in this way. We'll take the fin off first. We'll just call these the L brackets. One thing you'll notice here with these two is that there's like, I design these little hex shapes inside the 3d print for it to sink the nut into it and um, it's another one of these things that just kind of helps keep the nut from turning when you're trying to tighten it so we do it on time here i bet this dude took forever <laughs> sorry okay out We'll do it up top here also. Okay. By the way, music day is brought to you mostly by Music Bed. Meaning, uh, they're not a sponsor, but that's where I got it. And um, I also got some from a site that was turned on to called Lit. L I C K apostrophe D and uh, they have more um, mainstream tracks that they have uh, put into their system, which is pretty damn cool. Actually, I'll loosen these up. I may or may not even be able to get the fin out. The way I've designed these fins is once you pop that thing in there, it's pretty Once you pop that fin in this slots, which you'll see sort of a tongue and groove uh, system that I've got. And once you pop that thing in there, it's pretty much in there anyway. It's almost like the screw stuff is, is uh, academic just to, I don't know, make yourself feel better. But I, I like the security personally. And, and there's a there's there's actually a chance that this would 
break if I, if I if I tried to pull out the screw. Okay, so let's unattach let's unattach it from the body of the camera. Let's kind of turn this face up here. So then this is uses my camera currently anyway, it uses a nits cage. I have purchased lots of cages. I've got one from Zacuto, I've got one from Small Rig, I've got one from Tilta. Uh God, who else do I have? Oh, uh eight sin. They all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um most of the time they're they're going well until somebody somewhere along the way makes a design decision that makes a particular cage like 80% useful or something. You're like, dang it, man, you were almost there. Zacuto was pretty good in terms of keeping it light and not having a lot of extra bulk on there. And then they threw these dainty rosette pieces on there that you can't, you would never trust, ever. Uh, okay, so we're going to take this off. So this is how it screws into the back, right? Here, I will undo my Limo. There you go. We are, our Remora is unattached itself from our camera. Um, And uh, for anybody that doesn't know what a remora is or hadn't really thought about it too much, I decided to call it a remora because of all the attachments, because they attach themselves to sharks. I thought that would be kind of interesting. Um, and little did I know until I started researching that they don't actually attach themselves to sharks with their mouth. They've got like this uh, weird adhere adhering area on like their, their skull, like their head on the top. Uh, anyway, so one of the pieces that I integrated here into this, and I didn't do it early on, I did it towards the end, but Nits makes a cool little HDMI clamp here that works well for this. And so I just figured out a way to just cut a little notch out of, I cut a notch out of the part that attaches to the camera here so that they're adapter could just fit right in there and then you just you know once you get your you would keep it a little bit loose until you actually stick your HDMI cable in there and then tighten it you know tighten it back down but what makes theirs better than anyone else's and like I said I've got all the different cages and all the different and many many different HDMI clamps I don't have blue condor and I don't have came TV uh, there's probably a shape I don't have shape there's a couple of others but what makes theirs work more than others, I think, is that if you see, well, let's see if I can get this up here, both sides. Let's see. Yeah. Both sides are oval. Um, and the reason why that's important, and, oh, and there's not a screw just like built in already. The reason why that's important is because you don't know which side you're going to need to be pushing in on. And so some of them have, it's like locked down on one side and then one, the other side can slide and be adjusted. And I tend to think that those don't work well for, you know, different sized HDMI uh, cables. Um, I will say right out of the gate that my only, the only bummer here is that if you use these, what are these called? Zipfler, whatever cables. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, certain cables won't won't fit. So this, I can tighten. I could tighten this all day. I could tighten this all day, and it's just not gonna clamp down on it anyway, right? But that's okay. But it can when I want it to, and that's the main thing. Okay, so now we have taken it apart. Hopefully that wasn't a waste of time to do it that way. I did just lose a part. Which part did I? Oh, I lost one of my L brackets. Fine. Okay. So, I'll kind of pull this apart a little bit. 
And if I can get it apart, then we will just move on to the next one. Sorry. I just created a couple little pieces here and they just kind of push, they just sort of push into the side here to kind of seal that up a little bit. Otherwise your cables are just sort of sitting there like that. Not a big deal. It's optional, but okay, drop that. Just try and think a little touches. Our cable is out, and you see how just bizarre it all looks right now, being all pushed and curled and stuff. Is because it's my measurements were off when we made it, and it's just a little bit too big. You're gonna give me one with a uh, much smaller junction here because this junction is what's eating up all the space so we're gonna fix that you know i'll put that aside let me go over what's happening in here on the inside uh these spots you see a cavity right here let's see yeah maybe get some shading on there through there yeah. anyway there's a there's a cavity right here and these are like those hex cavities I was talking about where I embed the, the nut into the print itself. Um, they can come out. They're not like permanent or anything. But uh, yeah, I put those in there in the various spots. And then I'm able to screw the other joints in. I have some here and here as well. These are for the bottom piece to attach. That's how those get attached. So, and then of course you have your spots and you have your spots here. And this, this is where it actually attaches to the body of the camera. Uh, one thing to notice here, here's your two, here's your two holes where the screws go through for mounting your plates together and then something to note here is I've got you see hole here and here and here uh, those are for nuts I put nuts in there the three m3 nuts um, it's funny I was gonna go fancy with the uh, Fancy with titles and whatnot like that. Um, I'm gonna turn off my turn off my third myself here. Let's see, we will do. Let's try it. Since my first, we're just give it a shot. Okay, so sandwiching important concept. <laughs> this is what I do because the pieces that they make normally for screwing things into 3D prints, they you melt them down in there and it's great and all you can thread stuff in there but if you turn it too hard it just rips the 3d print apart it happens all the time and um i just have never found that to be very strong uh if you're not needing to really put the heat on screwing something screwing something down then then they work fine it's it's fine i guess but i just prefer this um the downside to doing what I'm doing when I do it this way is I have to you know, kind of reverse engineer some stuff and oftentimes I have to add thickness to the piece to accommodate the sandwiching. Um, but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. I want to get some of these pieces out here. Okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, so like I said, you got the spots where screws drop in here, or nuts, excuse me. They drop in here like that. Uh, I did it just like so, so that the inside The inside of here has like a bit of a cradle 
it's like it's like 45 this way on one side and another 45 going this way on this side and so that the nut sits down inside there but also it needs to be it needs to sit flush That's, yeah you know it can't it can't poke out or anything it has to be flush because those plates are going to touch against it so and then just show you what the other side looks like same holes other side right here smaller that's because it's the exact basically the exact width of one of the sides of the hex i don't even know if that's a yeah yeah one of the sides of the hex so it keeps them from dropping they can't drop they can't come through this side um but they will fall out and stuff anyway back to sandwiching so the deal here and I'll use the top as an example. I have my nut here and I have my piece here. And I put my screw, my hole, comes to the back, sits here. Trying really hard to let everybody see, let me see it. Let's see, I'm pulling it down a little bit. There you go. Okay, now you can see the screw. So I'll push that down in here. Gets to a certain point, obviously. Right. Now as I start to turn this. Sorry. Start to turn this. It's going to be screwing. It's going to be screwing into, into that screw that's right here it's going to be pulling this together and that's the whole idea of sandwiching is this uh, i actually picked up a different screw that was too long for that but it's okay because i have this because i have this inset right here right it's because i have this inset the screw size that i need is somewhere in here Uh, yeah, so it's already too long for that. Probably this one. This is probably the right one right here. Yeah, there you go. That's the right one. Ooh, go to town. Just to show you. All right, so it's in there. So it's now attached to that screw inside there and so that's how all this little stuff works they're all the screws feed through one thing and push one part on somewhere else there's a nut somewhere else in the system that's going back the opposite direction and that just presses everything together so that is sandwiching okay Let's see. Um, let's go through some prerequisites here because without these, you can't even do this. All right. So, what do we got? We got. You need two to even do this. You need two nits mount, nits V mount adapters that uh, you saw me using. You need one nits cage HDMI clamp. So if you can find a way to get that clamp without buying that cage, great. But if not, and I don't think there is a way, unless they sell it differently, you will need to buy the whole cage. But I got to say, I think the cage is spectacular. I really do. Um, there is a mod that I've made for something else, and I'll show you that just for fun here in a little while. Um, but as a whole, Nits really thinks, thinks through very, very well. Uh, and I'm not being paid to say diddly from those guys um i think on this specific cage that i got i maybe they just i feel like somebody made a decision that wasn't helpful for my need anyway on one on one little area okay so let's see then you need one remora cable from alvin's cable that is the cable we are developing currently well hopefully we get to a point where you would be able to actually request that cable and they would know exactly what you're talking about 
You'll need all the screws, nuts, and a spring, which I will uh, show you on a list here momentarily. You need Allen and hex wrenches. You need a quarter 20 thread tap. Uh, let me show you what that is real quick here. Let me turn this off and I will show you. Okay, thread tap. So some of you guys might know taps are these things here, right? And this is a 3 8 one as a matter of fact, but they'll put threads on things. And so I do put threads in these pieces like here. They're, they're there, but uh, generally speaking, 3D prints, um, and mine aren't the best 3D prints by any means. That's kind of why I want to find a distributor or something like that. It's just not fine-tuned enough to give you really, really good threads where you can just screw stuff in and out really, really easy. So one thing I did, I actually made my own handle here because for anybody that's ever used a tap, they look like... They look like this for the most part, but right here there's a big T that comes out here, and it's really unruly to try and use it, and um, they uh, tends to wobble a lot while you're trying to create your threads. So let's say here I got more control. This is a quarter twenty thread right here. I take it here, and I can kind of be very gent. It's because it's plastic. Just very gently go go into the threads that I have already put there, but they, they just guide themselves in there a little bit easier. And now I can kind of, once it gets going, I can turn it pretty, pretty well. So this is just going to make really, really smooth threads. Um, I've actually done this too. Like there's been some products I made where Either small rig or wooden camera or somebody made something that uh, was like one of those rosette pieces that only allows for like a like an M6 or something. Um, I just got my quarter. I just got my quarter twenty threader. <laughs> it made it to my liking. Okay, so anyway, it just makes it. Let me see. I don't have any screws. Any screws? Yeah. So because I did that instead of being something that's difficult. Like I can barely get these in these other holes right now because they're just not, they're just not quite there. But in the one that I just did, screws in, screws in very easily, lickety split. Okay, so sorry for that little side note. But when you print one of these out, you have to do that to every single one of those holes. In my case, I just did it to the holes that I was going to use at that point in time. And I'll just uh, do the others later. Okay, so let's undo this real quick here. All right. So, kind of point this out real quick. You see these slots here, here, and here. Well, let me, let me get my, let me get one of my black sets. I've got a black set. This is what I was thinking of building tonight. Let me just put back together what we've got here. But here's how this thing is shaped on the outside. You've got these two pieces here, here, and here. And you kind of consider them like a tongue and groove. And then you get your I gotta make sure I don't like drop everything or something. Okay, so yeah, and then, so here's the base, here's the camera attach plate. Has those two big holes. And then you've got the two holes that, two slots that match that. So this is all just part of reinforcements. So you put those in there like that. And I'm not gonna slam it in there because. Because like I said, once you once you get that thing in there, it uh, stays pretty well without even doing your screws and stuff like that. So it's almost like I said, the screwing everything in is almost like feels like a formality sometimes. I'll like not though. I just want to make sure that it's good and solid. So 
All right. I'm going to show something else that's really important about this whole thing. Well, anyway. Kind of falling off my track here in terms of flow. All right, so let's put the camera aside for a minute. We know that that's what we've got to, it'll connect to that, right? Let me see if I can actually take this apart, and if I can't, then I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll cut my losses, because I do not want to break this, uh, especially on camera. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so. We are not gonna do that. Like I said, that's one of the good things about it. I mean, a lot of people were like, it's 3D printed, I don't know. Like, well, I'll tell you, uh, once you get it in there and it's pretty solid. So we'll, we'll start with the black one here. I, generally speaking, will get it. I'll set it up here. Do you know that I put it in those holes? And then I'll just, this is gonna be really loud, so bear with me, guys. It's mostly in there. Okay, see it's flush, right? So, I mean, it's still flexible right now, but we don't have, we haven't, you know, reinforced anything. So, what we'll do, our next step here, Pardon. Okay. Oh, I was like, wow, when this is apart. Okay. So these pieces right here, these are the L brackets. And, um, we're just gonna really, really start over here. So bear with the mess here. I kinda, like I said, I wanted to show you kind of what it looks like at the end and then kind of work, work our way back to the beginning. Or, yeah, okay. So we got screws here. Okay, so this comes back to our, our little M3s nuts. Um, real quick, hang on two seconds, guys. Let me do something here. All right. Uh, this is just to walk through the parts here, all the all the nuts and bolts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you've got this just gives you the full list. I don't really want to have to go through all of them uh, as I'm realizing that the music now has <laughs> reached an hour, I think. So pretty horrific. Anyway, um, there's all the stuff, and um, if you wanted to freeze frame it later when I re-upload this when we're all finished uh, you can do that okay there we go so um, so first thing I like to do is I will put the nuts kind of back in here in the back and if they don't quite fit, it's fine, because once you start tightening screws, it pulls them down in there. There, Jack, there, there, there. Uh, I usually do these, I don't put these, I don't put these in here first, because if while I'm trying to move it around or whatever, they'll just fall out or something, so. 
Uh, one thing I always have to keep kind of a finger up against one of them when I'm doing it. Try and keep them from falling out at first. Even though they're pretty tight though, gotta admit. Okay, so you got two uh, kind of different ones here. These are real thin kind of, let's see, come on, GH5. One of the reasons why I wanted to get rid of it, honestly. Uh, anyway, these are smaller and they're thinner and all of that. They go on the top and they have even a little notch right there. Just a tiny little notch to help uh, provide some resistance for the nuts when you start trying to turn things. And I did find one thing, by the way, for anybody that does 3D print. If you don't need specifically a round hole for something like this, just create a just create uh, like a diamond or something because the 3D printer won't like try and close, it won't try and close in on that circle. And it just really doesn't matter at all if it's the screws going through it. So here you go. We'll do this here. Let's see, this one goes on this side. No. There you go, yeah. So I try to design things to where everything kind of lines up. So the edge of the, the edge of the L bracket lines right up here. The edge, I can't tell if it's visible or not. My, my uh, monitor is like super contrasty. Anyway, things are, yeah, can you tell? Anyway, lines up right against the edge, the top, the top lines up right there, you know, it just it's smooth across the top, things like that. Things I just try and do. So let's see, where's the other one? So the top ones have basically two matching ones. You just have to mirror it so that you get it like that across the top. Okay, now, so time for, um, this gets hard to manage, fellas. Let's see, let me try the other other angle hey what do you know okay so i got a mess of nuts here and uh <laughs> a lot more organized normally so anyway, you basically it's usually these little bitty ones here and i think they're eights m38 so i will feed the through through there print. and then that will go we already did knock that out didn't I yeah so you put your nuts it's hard it's weird you're, when you're when you're having to do stuff with those so darn small it's hard to show people because your fingers are in the way well, I'm, there's the nut right here. I'm going to mash my finger against it and flip this back over, right? And this, this is what we're about to tighten right there. I got my M3. All right. That's already pulled that tight. So I can let that go. Do the next one. Same thing to find one of my little little bitties, little bitty ears. Feed that through. Come on, bad boy. Okay, come on. All right. If you are from Texas, like I am, there's a phrase down here. We got all kinds of weird 
idioms and phrases, and one of them is called, it's like trying to put a diaper on a hummingbird, and that is exactly what this is like. So I've screwed this in to the nut that was back here. Uh, I, get, I, get, I keep turning before I think I see the light. I don't see the light yet. Yeah, there was a nut right there. So I screwed that in there. Okay. So now we got two on here, but they're not through. They're screwed in. They're screwed in this way, but they're not screwed in. Sandwiched here, so they still have to sandwich with the with the shark fin. So I get one of these guys here. You get through. Maybe a top view might be better here. Okay, let's see. So I got it here. I put my screw. All right, put the screw through this hole right here. Feed through this side. And we'll get one more in three here. Can you see? I don't know if you can see. Again, it's so hard with the light. I thought I lit this well, but. You're just gonna have to trust me that this works. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, once again, you gotta hold your finger, hold the hold the nut with your thumb up against there, and then get your M3 screw and start feeding it through. Sometimes you have to back it out and then pop it back in there. That's kind of how. You know, kind of, somebody's, not, somebody's not cooperating here. I used to know, here's the good news with these. You don't need to put the heat on these screws. If you do that, you're just, you're tightening for no reason and you might break something. Most of this is just making sure that there's something there. Um, okay. This particular one here, the one thing to point out, if I can, see how these go up to allow for the, they go up to allow for this. That's part of just part of the design. And then this, the ones at the bottom, have to go down. And that is to make sure that there's enough room for the cable to come out through here. And um, also for aesthetic reasons. I still haven't determined whether or not I absolutely positively have to have the bottom. If I don't, if we don't have to have the bottom, then that does open the opportunity. That does give us the, that does give us the opportunity to uh, use those D-tap, uh, those D-tap areas there that are on the bottom because there is enough room for it. That's one thing I kept, working on was trying to make sure that there was enough distance between the camera attach and the DTAP cables, that, that DTAP head, so this could still work. Okay, that's attached here. Put my finger here. I still actually have to put this one on here. And only because I've got that already kind of sitting there, I'm gonna put this over the edge here. Here, probably. I'm gonna go ahead and screw that on a little bit, and then I'll. 
I didn't attach this one to the body yet, so I won't I won't lock that down just yet. And it's these little bitty ones. These little bitty ones are the ones that feed through the back here. Yeah, I was gonna say, did I lose them that early? Something like that. This is an art form here, trying to show people <laughs> stuff where you can't quite look at it. Okay, so that's tight. I'll tighten that again. Let's see if we're here. Everything's tight. We're good. Pretty good. Uh, all right. So that's the first part. Then. The next part here, I will do the bottom here. Now this is what I was telling you about earlier. If you want the hatch on the back, then you would put this screw down in this little nut down in here. Really, you could just put it down there either way, whether you want the hatch or not. I have designed this in a way to where, and I'll show you right now as a matter of fact, there are two pieces here. We've got one where you've got the hatch that you saw earlier, where I can I can open and close and have, you know, if I want to keep my electrical stuff in the back, if I need the electrical stuff, but I want to keep it kind of tidy, this is the hatch that I would do. I've got my cheese plates there, all that good stuff. And then there's a cavity inside here. This cavity allows you to put your stuff in there. It also also allows you to feed screws from the inside here into something you might want to attach here. So instead of having to attach like a, you know, a cold shoe out here and then attach something to that and then, and then, and then grab that and then slide that on here. And then by that time you do all that, you're like, you're at this, this far away from the, you know, the body to be able to do that. This allows you to attach stuff uh, more from the inside. This other piece actually does that too. But the difference is, instead of attaching like this, this piece will be a flat piece that will, you'll just use longer screws. You'll use longer screws to go through these two holes into these two holes into the plate. May not make sense. Just quite yet, but let me let me see if I can show you. So let's just kind of let's do some cheating here, okay? So if I do this, let's pretend we've got our whole setup here. I can either and I've got my plate. Well, this is going to be juggling here a lot, okay? So you got one path. It allows you to go like this, right? You can put all your stuff out here, blah, 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 blah. Or another path. I'll go ahead and get my top here. Okay. Right. So the other path, like, I'm not really going to use these. But if you're not going to use these back here, these all these electrical ports back here, and you really just need, you just want to mount stuff. Well, that's what this other attachment will be for, to save you some real estate. And it would want like this, basically, right? So there's still some space back here. You might be able to run a cable through there or something like that. But um, it allows you to borrow these two holes here and this hole here. You're just borrowing those. It was a way to kind of try and do something, you know, add another feature but stay efficient. So it's just another another way to go if you don't want all that extra stuff to add on there. Okay, so back where were we? Back here. Let's go on the bottom cheese plate. 
we're going to put our little M3, put our little M3 inside this slot. Another light, there we go. Again, similar to the other stuff, it's got a, there's a cradle down in there that is hex shaped. So once everything's mashed together and you start turning, it'll keep it from turning. All right, that's kind of prepared. We will prepare this slot here with another M3 screw. See that just drop right down in there. To me, it's easier oftentimes to just get this first middle one sort of done. And then um, from there, and uh, because we got so many screws here, I still have to kind of like size it out. <laughs> okay, this one, not long enough. There we go, okay. And be more prepared to give you actual sizes. And uh, I actually, can't, you know, would do that with legit instructions, but okay, so there we go. That's gonna go inside here. I'm gonna hold that down just in case. M3. We'll screw this in there. Okay, I'm not gonna tighten it real tight because I want to be able to move this around like here. Here. Now now is the time when we need to put in these uh, nuts back inside here. And this actually would be fine to use lock nuts. I just haven't. And mostly that's just because uh, as I'm talking to you fellas. Okay, now these down here use a little bit longer one. So you can see you kind of size it as you're doing it. It's going to be inset. So that should make it to the, to the nut. Some of my prints are pretty tight on, you know, the one thing about filament shrinks. It shrinks in small, it shrinks in small spaces. So sometimes you actually have to cheat. You have to cheat the legitimate sizing of things because you know it's going to shrink on the inside. And that's kind of a bummer when it comes to trying to, once you, uh, trying to do stuff for actual production. Okay, I've put in the other one here. Let's do that. Put it right on the sides of this one. Yep. All right. Three. All right. Okay, so this is attached. I'll go ahead and that down a little bit better by the way these little these things these hex deals are, are uh, wrenches are so great I labeled them just for myself but they have a rounded head on them as opposed to being just straight up and um, I just got so sick and tired of uh, the L ones where I have to pull it out and turn it and pull it out and turn it so these help for that also got kind of a swiveling rear back here so you can really just you can go you can just go quick and they're long when you're working with something like what we're doing here i can get around stuff a little easier okay so we've got this down here we are going to take our top and remember the top that i've made now screws into the boxes so this hole here um is really from a previous thing, but what I will tell you, this is kind of cool actually. Uh, where is it? Where did it go? Oh. Okay, so this is how I did that, by the way. Um, let me pop this out real quick. So when I did the thing where I was trying to find the holes, 
I created a jig for this. I knew I could attach it to the top, but I really needed to make sure that the holes were in the exact place that I needed them. So I attached it here with the top screw right here. And then I've got these little bitty holes here and here. And all I use those for were for guide holes so that I could get to when I slide it on so that when I was on here, those would go right down into place on both sides. I didn't do that quite right, did I? For you. You see, here's the two holes. And that just helped me know what, where those holes were going to be. So, a little extra piece I'd probably have to provide for anybody that wanted to attempt that by themselves. But if NITS participates, that won't be a problem. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to put a nut here. Okay, Fall, falls down into the cradle. We're going to do sandwiching again. Going to go through the back here. I need one of these longer ones. You see, it's got to go all the way through there, but it also has to go all the way through here. So that's why I kind of hold it up against there and be like, hey, did it make it? Yeah, it'll make it. Okay. All right. Okay. You just kind of tighten it too. No big deal. All right, so now we got our basic build here. Now again, the long one has to go on the outside. So we've got our short one here. We're gonna set it down in here. This is sort of the process here. You know, see, just falls right, kind of falls into place. What I do though, this is this is important because of how compressed everything gets. I tend to go ahead and attach my I attach my DC my remora cable in there first, and then I lay it down into this slot. There you go. All right. It's kind of the deal there. Now, I do have black peanuts that I made, but I still like the red ones like a lot. I feel like on this approach, since they're this color scheme, since uh, Nitz uses mostly black and then just has the accented anodized pieces, that I will do the same. So we'll put that down in here. Go, right? <laughs> when I flip this over, the one thing I do want to do before I even I could I just do it to for myself. Uh there's no I don't think you have to do it this way, but so I get these two M4. There's only two M4s in the list, and they go into thread holes that are already part of these are just already part of the NITS product. So just like I said, I just sort of, I try and utilize what's there as much as possible. And I know that these will provide a lot of extra support holding all this together by doing that. Um, I personally don't do this top until I get these put together. So let's go ahead and feed back through our other wire. It's gonna fit. Alright, good, good, good. Yeah. 
All right. We get our extra M4. Put them in here. Okay. All right. So now we just want to I just want to fine tune this, get this top cheese in here. All right, so. It's another one of those where if I were more prepared, but you guys, anyway, you need one that's long enough to go through. It's got to go through flush with this, but also go past, let's say two to three millimeters of the top of the female plate, which it's doing right there. Let's see, is this a better angle? Uh, yeah, maybe. No, yes. And that's gone into that lock nut I was telling you about. Get my size again. The right one. Now I, I do put, um, normally put washers in here. I'm just kind of speeding things up here a little bit. Now you have a very, kind of a very sturdy cheese system at the top there. I mean, this is already put together and I haven't even put the screws through here yet. So now we get our, our M5s here and they will go into these custom peanuts that I created. I wish I had a drill for this because this is just take time. So M4, M5. Hopefully I'll get better at these videos like this where I know where my cameras are. And I definitely lost a part there, okay. You gotta do these like cook, cooking shows. You show it. I bet that's so loud, guys. I'm so sorry. You gotta do these like cooking shows so, um, so you just put together parts of it and then just jump to the next spot. I want everybody to see it in real time. You know, obviously, if I wasn't talking to, talking you through it, it would go much, much faster. set it down earlier when I was pulling the camera apart. Two seconds. This is super cool. This is like a little ratchet wrench. And it puts in pieces like this. 
So it's just great because you can get it in the tiny little spots, but also just gives you a little more leverage. It's not one of the stupid regular hex nuts. And I believe this is the wrong. I found this, I was watching um, uh, DSLR video guide, uh, Caleb Pike was doing one of those like, hey, what to get for Christmas for videographers or something. And and I just had to have it. Okay. Is a little quirky sometimes. Now I think one of the reasons why this one might be a little harder. I don't think I. I don't think I uh, got my threader after those nuts, or it would go smoother. So something to consider. And sometimes by not doing that, if you've ever. I don't know if you've ever done drilling or something and you haven't drilled a pilot hole. It's kind of like that. You can end up breaking the... You'll split the plastic or something. So it's best to do it if you can. If you can. All right. Plenty tight, though. There. And I got those in there. These here. Kind of more of an accent piece, right? Okay, so that's the overall... Uh, let's see. Um, by the way, this, the way this fits, I don't know if I showed you this very well, but there is a cavity, the way that this is cut here, let's turn this way. Yeah, much better. This is cut just like so, and it's to coincide with the shape that this is here. You got it bigger here. And that little notch right there and that you want that to fit in to that slot it's gonna drop it's gonna drop right down into that slot when everything's good to go right and this is why this is you can see what I'm dealing you can see what I'm dealing with it's a lot to pack in unnecessarily so uh, once these cables get um, once these cables get modified, this is gonna be it's gonna be great. So, but for now, there's just all kinds of mayhem here to get that where it really, really needs to be. Okay, so that's what I was talking about earlier. With these little pieces, we've got these are just little things to kind of help. These little pieces here. Uh, and some light reflections. There. Yeah. They're just to kind of like close the slot a little bit. There. It just cleans it up a little bit. That's all it's for. And I got one for the other side. There you go. It's all nice and compact inside there. It will be even better, I promise. I think also when I get the final ones, I may create something that allows you to uh, screw it down inside there. So that um, you know, if you take this on or off or something like that, it just it just stays together as a unit much more. You're not having to like figure out what to do with the cable. Okay, so there's the overall piece here. Now for some of the fun part. Let's see. We have... This is what I was telling you earlier, by the way. Theoretically, you could be done if you wanted to be. You would just take out... Theoretically, you could be done. You would take out... You would take this screw out and these two screws out and just get longer ones. And then you would attach this here. And there, you, your fin, your fin is complete. Um, 
It just depends on how much stuff you want to run off of it or anything like that. Maybe you just want to use this differently. Um, again, you can use this to not even be two batteries if you want, uh, which some of you saw with pictures and some of you have not, but I will show you that in a little bit. Okay, so here's the fun part. Okay, so the one thing that we have to do, new part, I've not shown you. This is the latch here. And you've got your top here. You're gonna have to we have to figure out a way to put this here. Which again, I'm kind of pretty excited about putting this red with the black. And it will close up inside here. Like that. And all fit nice and neat like that but in order to do it we have to have a spring that's where these come from these are about seven inches in diameter uh forget how long these are um it's funny i don't have a ruler maybe this will Okay, so we're looking at zero. I don't know what that even means. Those are just notches. Those aren't actual measurements. Um, uh, anyway, I don't know. Screw it. <laughs> this, I'll say this. This screw right here is 35 millimeters. And you're looking at a spring that is much longer than 35 millimeters. I want to say these are 50, maybe, if I had to guess. Let's say 50. Anyway, the important thing is that the, the important thing is the diameter of the wire itself. Uh, I went through a lot of different springs, and if there's, if they're not thick, it just, just doesn't have enough resistance. So this is about one millimeter thick of wire. And it, right now it's too long. And so what I end up doing is I have to cut off about one quarter of it to get it to where it'll be the right length. And these wire cutters are the only ones that I have found that didn't cry and whine probably shoot all over the place. Yeah, okay. Man, if I would have had if I would have had the uh, GoPro loaded up, that would have done that. Anyway, it doesn't create a smooth end, it creates that curly end right there. But it's gonna be okay because one of the things you have to do when uh, creating something like this is I have to create like a little pocket here like a cradle for the spring to sit down inside. Okay, and another thing that's important about this mechanism is there is this, see this piece here? It's like a shelf. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep this thing from falling farther. And when it's at rest, it won't just like fall, you know? So it's, it's just gonna provide a place for that to sit. And Another interesting thing here is there's a, see this cone looking deal? So the cone fits inside the spring like that. But you'll notice that the cone is not like, it's kind of at an angle. It's got a, it's got a angle to it. The reason why is when that, when that turns inside it still needs to kind of go straight down but to the best of its ability. If it were completely coned, it would start curving into the, uh, curving in too much and screw things up. So that's about as good as I can explain that. But you have this here, this, this hole here, it's gonna be a hinge. There's a screw that's gonna go through 
I'm just gonna go through that all in there. Okay, so anyway, this is not uh, easy per se. Let's screw this down inside. This is definitely like what I said earlier about uh, trying to put a diaper on a hummingbird. <laughs> this is definitely it. Um, I feel like I'm missing some stuff here. Anyway. So one of the things I do is I get my screw sort of loaded in here, loaded in here a little bit. I don't put it all the way, I just enough where I can see it because you'll see why in a second because you're juggling a lot. So I have to put my cone inside the spring here, right? And now I'm going to try and be kind of holding all this together. Right? Sometimes it can be a bit of a disaster to squeeze it all together. Once you kind of get it down in there pretty well, not too bad. Oh, I had it stick when I was squeezing it, that screw stuck out. So I'm trying to line up those holes. It's gone through one side, went through the other. Good. Now before I get through here, before I get through that, before I get through that side, I want to put that nut over there. That's going to be important. You know what? Today, I am going to put a. I'm going to put a lock nut in here. Just why not? Didn't really designed for that though because they stick out farther they stick out farther than those other nuts here we go though Let's screw this together now again don't over tighten you just need it to tighten too honestly i may have over tightened that already So this notch is going to go inside this spot right here. And I made it deep because I really wanted it to lock in there good. So in some ways, it's not the easiest to latch it on there and take it off, but that's by design. I don't want it to come across real easy. So I'll go ahead and lock that in there. And then here we get our 35. in here you'll notice it stops and that's because you'll remember earlier there's a screw or a nut that we put in the center and that is what this is screwing into currently hopefully yeah there we go okay Even up. Not turned upside. How's that thing going? Turn upside down. There we go. So we are we are making the hinge for the latch. I think I'm getting close, fellas. Fella, I should say. Since Lenny, you're the only one in here. Uh, all right. Okay, there we go. All right. It is built. So get a latch. I don't know. What do you think? Do you like the solid red or do you like the, the little accents? Cool. As it gets the plastic stuff like this, as it starts to get use, as it gets a little more use, it uh will start to come together more. So I can attach it or I think while I have it off, let's just kind of talk about some stuff. 
so <laughs> got my headphones here. Get a yank. I'm going to switch here. Okay, hey. So one of the things that I like about this whole get up here in the back. Mm, okay. Is that the back here? All right, we're good. Uh, with the back here, I can attach. If I decide I want to, I can attach the like put a, uh, I don't know, like the SDI adapter that here if I want to. I can put a transmitter back here if I want to. I mean, that's pretty legit right there. You could even put a, or like on the top, you could put a, uh, you know, like a Senna eye or something. I'll switch back to the other angle. That's not a good angle at all. Okay. All right. So let's go back to it. The great thing about this, you know, you could put a transmitter back here. And think about how tight that's going to be. If you have, you know, if that transmitter is here, you've got your battery here. You know, it's just pretty, and your cables can come out of these holes to power your transmitter. You can run your HDMI cable through here, the back of the camera, down here, because you have cheese stuff at the bottom. We can do cable management with like our Briggs and stuff, you know. Cable management bottom. Then you've got your transmitter here. It's just there's lots of things that this deal can do here. Kind of keep things tidy. Keeping things tidy is like one of my big my big problems. My big things that I like to do. Oh, by the way, this is something really important. Okay, one of the things that I did with the design is you see there's this cavity under here. Now that is purposely designed to be able to run cables from one side of the camera to the other. So here's just like a run stop cable, for instance. I take my run stop cable, go into my clutch, let's say, and then I just run it through here. No problem. Uh, the XLR cable works too, as well, to be able to run through there. Um, really anything else. If you just needed a cable to get to the other side, you could do it. Uh, I believe, hang on one second here. Even an HDMI. So there you go. It just provides a nice little tunnel for cable management, which is one of my like I said, cable management is one of my big deals to try and... I don't like a camera to look like it's rigged. I like a camera to look like it's, it was meant to be that. Um, but yeah, you could do a transmitter in the back. You could do something like a Sinai across the top. Still going to be, as a whole, still going to be pretty small. You could do this on the back. It wouldn't even matter. Or even go that way. The distance between here and here allows for, still allows for a decent amount of size batteries. Uh, so anyway, you can do that. Like I said, the SDI thing here. I've got a new theory on the SDI, by the way, uh, that I'm anxious to test out. Here's something that I do, by the way, for things like the, uh, like a transmitter. If the transmitter has an NPF mount, I create these little, 3D printed adapters and they have holes here so I could screw into that through here a 
let's say it go like that and then there gets that thumb there so if that's screwed into here that puts your that puts your uh, transmitter really really tight and it really works for anything that's MTF based um, I even have something I did before I unhooked this to show you guys, I have two transmitters back to back and I have a double sided MTF field where both of these can sandwich together uh, back to back. And then I run DC, like I got a DC splitter and runs to those, provide those the, the feed that they need. But you know, again, it's just different ways of mounting. And some of you may have seen this since I have a Zoom F3, which I very much like by the way, not good for live feeds per se, but because uh, it's got the 32 bit float and that's great and all for post, but you're, you're not getting to control as much of what's coming out. Um, so whatever's going into your camera, if you use this line out or anything like that, uh, the stuff that's in the camera is just going to be for reference to help it line up. But anyway, created this little, created this little V-mount adapter here. This allows it to slide right on as well. So if you want, you can go do that. Now you've got pretty tidy setup there. You've got a V-mount. You got your audio. Theoretically, you throw your transmitter on the back like that. That's a full. That's a full setup. Like, you know what I mean? That this is not, this is not just a shark fin. Uh, and again, you put your audio, you put your power cables inside the back of that thing and feed them out the side here. And then, um, I also included, take this off here and this just to make my life easier. I also did create extra holes here. So when those holes are specifically for things like cable management. You put your sprig on there or something like that. You got your holes running out. Uh, I don't have anything I was gonna put in here. We'll say this, how about this? Let's just do this for fun. Here is a tap come on baby okay yeah so there's a d-tap you see it fits down there pretty close but what am i going to do with all my cable <laughs> this by the way is a voltage meter you plug this in and it will tell you that what's powering uh the v-mount and i can actually show you that let's see Now, for now, I'm just gonna get kind of janky here and cram all this stuff in there. Also, use these two mounts. What I'm starting to do is actually cut. I just realized I'm blocking view here. I'm starting to cut some of my cables and like resolder things and stuff like that to make things shorter. This is a good one to show. Okay. So, for instance. I would put this on the other side actually um, to do this, but I will show you. Here's what this does. Uh, 
All right. So this shows. Sixteen point four, right? So, um, and what I did learn, by the way, kind of an interesting, weird thing to learn, is that you only need one of these in the chain to show your voltage. Mm -hmm. both on there. Let's try that. Maybe that'll work. Can you still, yeah, you can still see it. Okay, good. So 16.2 volts. Still works pretty well. Let me take this one off. See, this is the first one that I put on, right? Mm. God, it's hard to do with one hand. Okay. Again, I still got 16.2 volts. They dropped to 16.1. Right, that second. What it does do, this particular voltage meter shows the percentage will always be on what the lowest number is in the sequence. So if you put two batteries on it and one's at 100 and one's at 95, it's going to show the 95. I don't know why that works that way, but it does. It's kind of weird. Okay. I got the 16.3. Now this, when I see things like 16.3 and 16.2, stuff like that, swapping two things out, I don't know enough about currents and all that sort of stuff to know, you know, if I'm talking to, if, you know, Alvin or one of you guys were looking at this, if you'd say like, oh my God, you know, you, this is illustrating just because it's for your camera. I don't know. I don't think so. that out and now it says 16.4 at 100 it's because this battery is fully charged at 100 and this one had less on it this one had less voltage so it goes down so 16.2 3 at 99 okay anyway let's let's uh undo all this for a second because i want to show you some other stuff two-hand job okay one th thing I thought that somebody might have questions about is well hey you're doing all these with the little bitty batteries can they work with bigger batteries and one thing I am gonna do here real quick I'm just gonna take this out because it's not one in my way all right okay so we got it back together all right I got a couple of these new small rig batteries, the 99s. I've yet to actually start recording with them, but nonetheless, they fit. No problem. A little bit bigger in that regard than my little Switz. But these give you tons of inputs if you were doing that, you know, kind of stuff and wanted that to go. Like if you weren't going to hot swap and you just wanted to have something that was going to run a while, these would be killer to do. Um, also, if you're somebody that's just super worried about the two batteries and you're a, uh, don't like you have issues with trying to power your monitor and your camera with the same battery or whatever, then fine. Don't use the splitter back here, okay? Just use a normal Limo to DC, which Alvin could also make for you, but just be just a normal cable, running into the side that you want that to be run into, and then let the other side run into wherever else on the camera that you need. Then you still have 
two big batteries powering a lot of stuff without applying weight to the monitor at the front of the camera or anywhere else. It all is going to stay in a central powered area. The only downside to doing this type of deal here is that, you know, I mean, if you need to swap it out in the middle of something, then you actually have to pull it off the battery and then take the battery off. Um, for what it's worth, I have some more cables being made right now that are going to do something similar that something similar that we have going into the camera. We're going to have coming out of the back. Uh, and that will be, yeah, well, I don't have it in front of me, but if you've ever seen those really big, uh, D-tap hubs that have tons of D-tap hubs on them or whatever, uh, spots, I'm going to make one of those with a splitter on it that will run into the back of this. And then you can mount that back here and you'll have tons of power output. So you can literally run the entire rig in theory. In theory, <laughs> you run the entire rig off of the one hot swappable setup. All of your, all the focus units, your monitor, everything off of that one deal. Um, it does help if the products that you're integrating have regulators in them and things like that to kind of help, you know, any kind of issues. But Zite, um, and I should have included them on here, but because I haven't received my first product yet, I don't really want to include them just yet. <laughs> They have a hub that uh, it has dual direction connections. If you've ever seen Bebop before, they have some sort of proprietary thing that they did. And I guess eventually somebody from a, another country decided to steal it and got away with it. Um, but anyway, uh, it will have that will be a hub back here that will have several D-tap connections that can go in either direction. So in terms of your wiring ergonomics, you'll be able to go all over the place. That same hub also has another DC port and it also has a Limo out, a two pin Limo out on it. So then from there, you could add on a, uh, some stuff like I've got elsewhere. And this is why I may break this down into an, I'm going to, I'm thinking about having a second part to this where I go through a lot of the little electronic stuff, but you can connect a two pin Limo hub. So you'll have a cable that goes from there. And then at the end of that has three Limo connectors there. And that usually has a ability for you to screw that onto something there, uh, to something else. So lots of possibilities back here for wiring extra stuff and extending the functionality of this from an electrical perspective. Um, I thought some people might want to know, but what if I have bigger batteries or smaller batteries? What, if, what does a smaller battery look like? Okay. Well, we're about to find out. Okay. Let's do those. I'm really anxious to check those out, actually. Well, I will say this. Let's start. Let's start here. Let's start here. Okay. So we had the tiny little, we had the tiny little, um, hang on a second, guys. Maybe something's going to swap over here. Anyway, um, let's see. We had the batteries that I had, and they do pretty good. But I will say this, when you get this on here, they still, if you're thinking about being flush with the side of the camera and the cage, they still stick out a little bit. So I will say the little Nanos and probably those little um, small rig 50s are like flush, like, like exactly, exactly flush. And that is, that is really nice from a standpoint of somebody that wants to have things smooth. Um, what was the lyric? All right. So what about these bad boys like this? 
So you've got your swit. I'll put a little swit over here. Okay, that's the size of that. And you've got this. All right. Yes, it does fit. If you look at this here, you still got your cable. It fits right in here. Okay, it's tight. Uh, but it absolutely works. So that's the good news. And you can still access it. Right. I mean, for me to put a big ginormous one on here, you might as well just get a normal, uh, normal size shark fin or something like that. That's what makes these nanos so much better. They cut it off here to try and make it smaller. So last thing, I guess, let's, um, this for grins. We already had it attached anyway, but we'll do it again. I'm realizing this is like the longest live stream ever. Sorry. Okay. So you kind of have to let's see. Is that it? Yeah, you can kind of see it. Okay. You see red dot lines up. Okay. The one thing I have noticed is that this bottom right hand side tends to just not play nice um, in terms of connecting to the camera. So I usually try and start there. So much stuff out, but okay. Might even be able to get longer screws in there. Never screw anything all the way down, of course. I could give you give me a better angle here, but there's just not one. Kind of loosen the other side a little bit. Sometimes if you 
If you tighten one side too tight, man, it makes the other side harder to cooperate. Long hex bits, though. Okay. So we've got the top, the uh, top here. This is where this HDMI clamp comes in. You kind of sandwich it here. Back to sandwiching again. It's making me hungry. Say earlier, diaper, hummingbird. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now you'd probably make sure that your HDMI cable were kind of in, you kind of work it in together at the same time. All right, there you go though. It's attached. Maybe double check some spots. The bottom is always the one that gives you the worst trouble, though. I don't know why, but it just does. Probably if I had decided to make it looser. I mean, because really only as long as one side, just, just one has to be in there. Maybe be an adjustable, a little bit of a sliding. on we'll, uh, got a lot of fingerprints there there we go so we'll just throw on a couple of these new wheels here you know the drill what I would love to have is a switch put a switch on this thing get powering up There you go. These don't have to be the same batteries or anything like that. I'm just one of those guys that likes that. But again, there's probably some stuff we could do here to get this forward a little bit. But 
So you saw I put this one on first and this one. No problem. I can take this one off. Still got juice, right? Uh, put the zoom on this side. Right? I'm having to hold it right now because I took off my quick release plate. But uh, works pretty well, fellas. Take that off. By the way, I mean, you know, there's cables for powering this with the USB-C as well. And there you have it. That is the Remora build. All right. Well, man. Uh, I am <laughs> sorry it took that long. That is a crazy, crazy time for that to, uh, that is a crazy amount of time for a live stream. But uh, hopefully if you stayed this long or watched any part of it, you like, share, subscribe. And um, like I said, if I get some views and interest and things like that, hopefully, we will, um, I'll do something with electronics and stuff once those guys get stuff back. Uh, let's see. Chat. How does the, how does this mount to the B-cam rig? Okay. Did I answer that for you? Lenny, <laughs> finally. It took a while, but it's because I was building everything in reverse. Um, I, I took it off the rig when I first started. It was on there. Took it off and then put it on. But. If you have, um, if you've ever seen the knit specs or anything like that, it's just using the same exact holes that, that the knit spec uses. There are those, there's four screws back in the back of the Z-Cam. Uh, two screws are to the right and left of the HDMI input. That's where two of the main ones are. And then I will try and point out these others. Why wouldn't it be great if the whole thing were you just attached the thing loosely? Ultimately, that's what I wanted to do a long term, long time ago, was have the inside of the gut to this thing actually be an NPF attachment, so that you could just jam the whole thing on there. There's just not enough strength on an NPF attachment to do that. Um, let me see here. But having a cage on the camera. I mean, I have a cage. Are you not? Hang on a second. Let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah. So this is my knits cage. Here. Right. Um, and like I said, I've got several cages. It. It can go on with a cage or without a cage. It won't even matter. It's attaching to the four screws. There's a screw down here on the Z cam and a screw here on the Z cam. And, and there's, so there's two screws at the bottom of the Z cam and there's four screws at the top of the Z cam up here, up here. So there's two, there's a, there's a screw here and here on either side of the HDMI. And there's two more, one there and there which I'm not using because I didn't want them to interfere with the, the antenna and stuff like that. So they capitalize on the same two holes as the HDMI. So no, it just attaches to the back of the camera and you can have a cage or not have a cage on it. Um, I've done this with several different cages, so it doesn't rely on this cage specifically uh, by any means. Because even if you didn't do this little spacer here, you could still screw that in and it would hold it on. Okay, so there's that. Um, one little bonus. Let's see, wood heavy. Yeah, no, not at all. I, uh, I just have to take everything off to do it, but I can show you a couple things.
All right, so I have all the parts to my rig. Okay. So this is really sweet, by the way. This is awesome. This guy named Power Chung. Dude, this is a little SSD thing. It's like an M.2. And this screws to the camera here. Let me put this here. So this is way smaller than the little uh, the T5s and stuff like that. And then this is his little USB thing here. It attaches back here. So it just bolts right on there like that. No problem. That's one of the things I do there. And we got this, the NITS camera. The NITS rig has this adapter here, which is great for the clutch. It puts the clutch right where it needs to be because most people don't seem to figure that, haven't figured that out. Right there, right? And now your clutch is basically the perfect height. So that's another thing that I like knits for that. I do things like this also. I get these little adjustable rosettes. I can adjust my grip on the fly. Um, this one had. I do the reason why I do this and have these rosettes up here. It's not for shoulder rigs because I can't stand shoulder rigs, but it's good for mounting other. Like I could put the clutch all the way up there if I want to, or another type of grip. But it allows you to spread out your. Just all I'm looking for is to be able to spread out how far apart my hands are when I'm holding it. Uh, this is a modification I made recently for this knits, for this knits rig. Okay, knits decided and small rig also decided to take off a bar back here. I think they thought, hey, let's make it to where people can get to the buttons real easy and all that sort of stuff. And to some degree, that's cool. But uh, if you want to use something like this grip here from uh, Bright Tangerine, which is so freaking strong. It's basically the same kind of uh, grips that we would be using on like Ari or something like that, you know, some of the bigger Sony Venice cameras and stuff like that. But like your hand's not going to slide out of there this way. And these pieces here slide. They slide so you can move your you can move your handle forward and backwards pretty easy, you know, pretty quick. Um, so to that end, what I did, since there's nothing to screw here, I created this little thing here. It'll drop down like that. Let's see, why I might as well, right? Since we're since we're here. Sure it's And it's like I just somebody always does something that doesn't quite work for me so I just um, adapt there okay so now I got that covers up a little bit of the screen but doesn't bother me that much because I don't really use the screen all that much I just use it to know that the thing's on and then I'm using uh, something else. Okay, and this, put it back to this little bad boy here. Get you out 
to get in there. I really want to make this little piece, this little adapter out of CNC metal, just so I feel comfortable, a little more comfortable. But really, I mean, I've screwed this thing down and I've jerked it around, and it, it's still it's it's mostly held on by the metal side, so not a big deal. Okay, yeah, so it's basically screwed on, and I can. Adjust it. I mean, to get the balance where it needs. You still, even if it didn't matter if you're balancing, holding it, putting it on a gimbal, putting it on an easy rig, putting it on anything, you still need it to be balanced. And so, if I put a screw down here to hold it on an easy rig or something like that, I still want to be able to fine tune that where I need it. Where I can move all this stuff forward to be able to put. I need, I need some more height on my freaking arrow. There we go. Let me get this way out. Okay. Yeah. Because now I can move this order back and then lock it down where, where I want it. But it's still, I can get this pretty far back and it's still not getting in the way of the battery area like at all. So I will still lock that down. Can I get my fingers in there? Not really. Once I get once I get to that, if I move it all the way back, I can lock my fingers in there. But that's just for this one. I still have the other. I have the stinger and some other handles. All work fine. Just depends on if I'm going to be doing this and if I have a massive lens on there. I've got a couple of really really big lenses that you need for strength. Also, one thing that's kind of cool, I, if you've ever seen these little bubble levels that you can put in a cold shoe mount, I actually took the center out of the plastic, of the rubber cold shoe part, and then I shaved this bubble level um, until I could get the diameter to cram it into the hole of the handle. So it's just part of my handle. All right. Anyway, I think that's it, man. Um, oh, I've got lots of chats now. Awesome. Hang on a second. Let me see. Yes. So your HDMI question. If you're using the NITS HDMI cable, um, Yes, you can. That's what that's for. You just kind of loosen. You would loosen this up just a little bit, not a ton. And that way you could slide these. You could slide these open and close and get your cable in there. Um, like I said, my the cable that I use primarily it's so thin, I go for these real tiny ones. The clamp can't even tighten down on it because it's smaller than an average, uh, smaller than an average cable. But for the thicker ones, I did it the other day, put a thick one in there, man, it tightens that thing in there big time. So probably a really good idea if you're going to run an HDMI cable into, let's say, like, you know, you want to run an HDMI cable on the SDI adapter or something like that. Get a bigger one and tighten it in there just like crazy. Run it down the side, down here, you know, underneath. You know, whatever you want to do uh, as far as cable management goes. You know, you put that down here, something like that. What I am going to test... It, it seems like we're all trying to put our SDMI adapters in the back of the camera. But what I don't know is why can't you just attach the SDI adapter, whether it's this one or another one, to the back of the monitor? You just run one cable up to the monitor itself. And uh, then everything's kind of like in one spot. 
And if you're using a system like this, where instead of you, you won't need, you won't need the, the NPF um, slot on the back of your monitor because you'll be using potentially with a system like this, you'll be running a DC cable from the back of here into the DC port of the monitor to power the port. So you could power the, yeah, you can power everything. And similarly here, you've got two deals here where you're supposed to go in one and then the other and all that good stuff like that. Just run a DC splitter and power both of them. Um, but I just bought a Black Magic uh, 12G one a couple of days ago. One of those real nice ones. And I am going to create an attachment for that to put that on the back of a um, small HD. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so I have the same NITS cage. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I just felt like I was missing something on this attachment. I was like, dang it, man. Like, you just took away a spot that I thought was usable. Apparently, their version one had a bar across the back. But what they didn't have. They didn't have any of this, all this cheese up here. They didn't have any of that in the previous one. So it's like the upgrade, they did something really awesome in one spot and then take away a feature somewhere else that's uh, that's useful. So um, these are good. Oh, and they, I think they, they didn't have these uh, rosettes here on the first one either or something. I can't remember. There's a couple of couple of differences there, but um, I think the improvements as a whole are great. I just think this little bridge attachment thing would um, help a lot. And I know for sure that if it were made out of metal, it would be, you know, we could get it thinner and everything else. The idea here really on that, you can see it too, by the way. Yes, I need something that would create an attachment point, but it also has to be completely level with the front so that you can put something across there. That was that was how the important part there. But I def man, I definitely like this products for sure. As a whole, I think they're they're killing it. They're doing a good job. This, by the way, is their version two uh, follow focus system which is really, really nice. It's nice and smooth and all that good stuff. Um, depending on the focus throw of your lens, of course. I use the focus, I use my Great Joy. It has a massive focus throw, so I didn't get to put it, I didn't get to put the, the stoppers in there for it or anything like that. Um, for what it's worth, I have tested the rig, the back, I have tested it connected uh, nucleus nanos and all that good stuff. It all works great. Um, one thing that some people can do, I can no longer do. Since, since the CCAM has this port back here, uh, it's a power out. You can, anything coming out of here that's getting power is going to be powered by this entire is going to be empowered by this entire thing. Whatever's being empowered here will also be hot swappable. The thing that I learned, uh, I'll be at the hard way, is that that port can only handle a certain amount of amps max. Uh, and I overloaded it the other day. So that port is basically useless to me now. And I think uh, Ken soon told me that it was uh, had a five amp, it was five amp max on it. So, um, yeah, so that kind of blows. <laughs> but for anybody that hasn't ruined it, if you manage the 5 amp max and you're just going to power like a Nucleus Nano or maybe like a monitor or something like that, all of that would be powered by this one rig here. Um, what I have learned with the Nanos, uh, things like that that need low voltage, is that sometimes the Limo current will fry them or it just it will just like stop working right in the middle of trying to use it so um 
that is another product I am going to be doing. I have got some down, I have bought some uh, voltage down converters. Let me switch to this. So I bought some voltage down converters. They go from like 12 to 5, 12 to 9, things like that. And um, they're like USB hubs. And so what that will allow you to do is go out from these from this system and maybe attach I'll figure out a way to attach that like to the front or side of the rig or something like that and then you'll have USB power jacks you know in the front of your rig up by the up by the hollow focus units and all that sort of stuff that needs lower voltage um, but my goal for the most part after all this here is to try and get ports and things like that up to the front of the camera so that when I'm attaching a monitor or I'm attaching a ball of focus unit or anything like that I'm not having to run cables anywhere they're just dropping right there and that's it so um more hub oriented kinds of things you know like or like a docking think of it like a docking docking station kind of stuff uh that would be the ultimate goal just to make it it's super easy to plug the stuff into. I will say, 99% of the time, I probably would not use this shark fin setup. It's just, it's, it's unnecessary if you're just gonna race out the front door, you know what I mean? But man, if you were doing an interview, or even if you just had a really large lens on the front, which, um, like I said, I'll have to show you that one Siri zoom that I bought. It's so, it's like, it's like seven pounds or something. Um, something like that you need more weight to balance the back and also just having more weight helps reduce your you know micro jitters and stuff like that if you're going handheld so um i like being able to attach a lot of different things to the back in a compact form and it's there's a lot more function to it i had for instance i had the z back that uh small rig made and it was basically just a box to stuff cables into a just kind of a joke <laughs> so this will do you'll still be able to do some some wire management with this type of a deal here but also have all kinds of power options going on back there to power a whole bunch of stuff that's my goal um i will say if you have a road wireless goes um the top cheese plate the top cheese plate here is really good for those. Like you put a cold shoe, a couple of cold shoes up here, and you can put two wireless go uh, receivers. Or, or yeah, receivers up here on the top. Uh, and they're just gonna be completely out of your way. Um, and then, you know, however you wanna run those, you can run those into the side over here, or, you know, if you wanna do something like, um, Yeah, I'll put them up. But like if you want to do any of those little XLR converters that take a 3.5 cable and go straight into XLR, then can you do that? So. All right, so anyway, powering up again. All right, there it is, powered up. I'm gonna turn it off. Uh, and I think, I don't know. I don't know what else to say at this point. So I hope that, I um, hope you enjoyed it. Lenny, my buddy, um, my Canadian friend. And um, yeah. That's it. So I think, um, yeah, I think we'll cut out. I'm glad you were able to watch and uh, talk to you some other time, man. <laughs>